Hey yo, what's going on Merc fam? Thank you for tuning in to episode 13 of our 31 days of Halloween challenge. I cannot believe that I've dropped a video for 13 days straight. It's like I haven't got no sleep, but I am honored to complete these videos for you all, especially upon request. And for that reason alone, I chose this revolutionary horror movie called I Know What You Did Last Summer. Now after this movie, of course, we got a lot of spoof and goof movies like Scary Movie 1 and 2. Now before we get started, on this hook wrenching gore movie i want to make sure that everybody has the chance to like subscribe to all my future past and present subscribers just hit the notification bell make sure that you're aware of everything i post a lot of people have been asking me when's the next time i'm gonna drop and i'm like i know that you're not a part of the noti gang because i drop every day now without further ado let's go ahead and talk about this really scary movie or at least an attempt to be scary so this movie really revolves around a group of teenagers huh this doesn't sound familiar does it and and pretty much they're from a small town. Jennifer Love Hewitt actually plays the main character, Julie. Not that this movie really specifies that she's the main character, but for the most part, she's the leading star. Freddie Prince Jr. is in this movie along with a couple other people. But really what happens is these group of high school kids are out driving, they're drinking, they're partying, having a good time, um, going to the beach at night. I don't know where they live, maybe in the hills of California, where you're driving on a hillside and you have to make these really crazy turns around all these curves and cliffs. One of the main characters in this group is this real loud mouth guy. He's always screaming in this movie from the beginning to the time that he dies. I mean, he was just yelling the entire movie at everyone. So during this part in the movie, he's like hanging out the sunroof, extremely drunk, drinking out the bottle. He accidentally drops it, making a mess inside of the car. And while everybody is trying to clean it up and grab the bottle, they hit someone by mistake. Now they didn't know it was a person at first because it was dark. They thought maybe it was an animal. The guy who was hanging out the sunroof has got blood all over his face and they're like oh my god you got blood on you and he's like it ain't mine so they end up getting out of the car, kind of investigating, and they find a boot, which leads to a guy who's missing a boot, um, and he's all tore up. His face is bloody as hell, and this is where the movie kind of created its own lane, all right? The group of teenagers are forced to make a decision whether or not they're going to call the police, call an ambulance, or get rid of the body. Now, this is where a lot of the tension builds in the movie. The girls of the group don't really want any part of this, but the guys are really for dumping this guy's body in the ocean they're talking about the rip current is going to take the body and of course what ends up happening is the group of teens are forced to dump this guy off of a pier into maybe a lake that leads into an ocean i can't really tell it was obviously dark now the crazy thing about it is by the time they take this body to the end of the pier they're about to toss him he kind of gets up and gasps for air which means that he's alive they could have just called an ambulance and could have explained the whole situation and probably got him out of it they ended up throwing this guy in the water and running off it seemed like he was dead for the most part he was just floating there he wasn't even trying to get up there were really no bubbles actually coming out from his nose fast forward a year and we find julie in a dorm room with one of her roommates and they actually have this plan to drop each other off at their parents house for the holidays or for the fourth of july i'm sorry it's technically a holiday and um julie actually goes to her mother's house where she receives this letter that says I know what you did last summer. And even though that's a very vague letter to be alerted from, you know, she's been holding in a lot of grief, which you could physically tell on her. She looks sick and her mother was even questioning her like, what's wrong with you? Where's my energetic loving daughter? So Julie ends up trying to find the other girl of the teenage group, shows her the letter. They end up finding the other guy who likes to scream. He yells at them again. And essentially the whole movie tries to go down this rabbit hole of figuring out who the heck is writing these people these letters? The guy is stalking them, killing off other people in the movie. Now, for the most part, they make you think that the murderer is going to be the boyfriend. They never really have him on screen when the murders are happening. So you're almost forced to believe that it's Freddie Prince Jr.'s character, but it's really not. It's actually the guy that they killed. Now, the movie goes very, very in depth on why he's coming for them. Instead of calling the police and reporting them, this guy ends up following them, harassing them, chasing them all over town and killing them one by one. Now, I know I didn't give you a spoiler warning on this one, but I feel that everyone has seen this movie, even renditions of it in like Scary Movie and Scary Movie 2. Those movies were really, really based on the premise of this film and Scream, but mostly I know what you did last summer. I couldn't help but laugh at all the moments that I could have thought of Scary 
scary movie. You know what I mean? Like when they're about to dump him in the water and they're like, oh, take his wallet, take his chain. And Ray Ray's like, I'm going to take his underwear. Like this shit is just so stupid that I couldn't help but think about that one. I feel that I'm going to do scary movie for one of my reviews this month. But this movie did a pretty good job on being scary and gory, but plot wise and acting wise, uh, it was terrible. I'm not going to lie to you. The fact that everyone was running and falling, it really took a lot out of the movie. There was just something about the way this movie was shot that I just wasn't even scared. I mean, the guy does have a hook. He's in this trench coat. He has a hat. You can't see who he is. But there wasn't really anything scary about him. Even for them to make, I know what you did last summer, and I still know, and I will always know, it just wasn't really a good premise for me. I'm pretty sure that's why this movie didn't go on as far as Scream did. Speaking of Scream, guys, they're actually dropping a new Scream movie this January. Uh, I don't like winter horror movie drops. They're really not that scary, but I think that they're just trying to put out some more Scream shit. You know what I'm saying? But back to this movie, uh, I think they could have did a whole lot better. I think that it was really a money grab, a cash grab, trying to follow in Scream's footsteps. But for the most part, if you want to watch something that's not so scary and you can eat popcorn text on your phone, not really pay attention to, I know what you did last summer is actually a good movie to watch, man. At the end of the day, I'm going to give this movie a 5 out of 10. I just literally watched it on Netflix last night. So I'm really fresh with it in my brain. And to be honest with you guys, there's a lot of different movies I'd rather watch, all right? But before we go, I want to thank everyone for really staying tuned with all of my movie reviews that I've been dropping this month. I've actually had a really fun time doing them and dropping them every day, man. But you already know what it is. It's your boy, Merc. It's been a pleasure, but I'm out.